join us here on Biblical Treasures, where we shall be looking into God's Word in a systematic manner. Welcome to Biblical Treasures. I'm your host, Natasha Brong Allen, and I'm, we're very happy that you joined us for this study. We trust that you'll take out your Bibles, that you can follow with us as we discuss from the book of Matthew. Just to inform you that the times have changed for the viewing of this program on Tobago Inspirational Network. So you can look for us on Mondays and Wednesdays, 8 a.m., Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and on Saturdays at 7 a.m. So you have many opportunities to view the program, so be sure not to miss it. Invite a friend, family member to view the program so that we all can study God's Word together. Like I said, we continue our study from the book of Matthew, and today we'll be focusing on the Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapters 5 through 7, and an abbreviated version is recorded in Luke 6, 20 through 49. As you will discover, Matthew's version is probably three times longer than Luke's version, and we'll probably be able to look today at Matthew chapter 5, and we'll want to look also at Matthew 13. I have with me today Pastor English Newsom. She's the pastor of the Northwest District. Welcome, Pastor Newsom. And her husband, Elder Newsom. Welcome. Thank you. As we get into today's discussion, we invite you wherever you are to join us as we have a word of prayer to begin. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we give you glory and we give you praise for another day, another opportunity to study your word. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll open our minds and our understanding, that as we open your word, O oh Lord, speak to us. Bless each viewer today, we pray, with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we go to the book of Matthew, we begin at chapter 5. And uh, as we look at the Sermon on the Mount, which can be entitled The Privileges and Responsibilities of Citizens of the Kingdom of Heaven, mm -hmm. we see here a wonderful, wonderful sermon by Jesus himself. In fact, it is the most preached on sermon in the Bible. People talk about it a lot because in it, there are a lot of principles to guide us on our path to heaven. And as we... Look today at the beginning of Matthew 5, we see that Jesus addressed the supreme desire of every human heart. And what is that desire? The desire for happiness. This desire was implanted by the creator himself and was originally ordained to lead man to find true happiness through cooperation with the God who created him. But what course have man taken? Man attempted to achieve happiness outside of God as an end in itself by a shortcut that bypasses obedience to the divine requirements. Let's look at the first 12 chapters of Matthew chapter 5. I'll ask my panelists, um, Matthew chapter 5, you look at verses 1 through 12, and tell me which one of the Beatitudes or two or three stands out to you, and how has it impacted your life? For me, it would have actually been verse 4. Verse 4, okay. It says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm -hmm. In my own personal life, I've had um, the death of some close family members, and so I've mm. had to mourn, and I have been comforted by God. Yes. That's wonderful. And you know, when Jesus was leaving, he said what? I send you the comforter. comforter. So I want you to know, Spirit. even as Elder Newsom says, no matter what we might be going through in life, and all of us have had that dreadful experience of losing a loved one. And we've all had that mourning experience. But if we know who God is, we have found comfort in his promises. Um, I like verse 6, which says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst mm -hmm. after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I think in this age uh, where there are so many distractions and we live in a world that there are so many things that appeal to us, mm -hmm. that um, appeals to more of our flesh nature. And the Bible says that if we really and truly have that hunger and that thirst after righteousness, indeed God will give it to us. It's not just waiting and hoping and wishing for the Holy Spirit, but having that deep desire mm -hmm. and going after it, knowing that God will fill us through His Spirit. So that verse always because it tells me of the part that I have to do and then God will do the rest. I like that Pastor Newsom and in truth and in fact as you said in our world we hunger and thirst after so many things mm -hmm. mostly wealth or money status 
but there's not that hunger and thirsting after righteousness. And I like that text, I think it's in Psalm that says, as the deer panted after, after the, the water, water broke, so my soul panted after thee. That's right. And as you were speaking, I actually got chills through my body. <laughs> you know that it's really, really um, an important thing for us in this day and age to hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. That's because right. it's the only thing that can keep us as we go through these trying times. So I trust that you too will find that desire in the word of God. And I guess that also coupled with um, the other beatitude that I'm excited about, mm -hmm. which is um, verse 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. It says, blessed are he, blessed are he when men shall revile you mm -hmm. and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The response is rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so pro pro persecuted they the prophets which were before you mm -hmm. and it is important for us that even as we hunger and thirst to go forward in God's righteousness and to have that passion with him that we will know regardless of what comes our way and we know that there's a time of trouble that will True. come yeah. we will not faint and neither will we waver mm -hmm. simply knowing of the fact that even those Christ himself mm -hmm. went through persecution and we can stand strong the Bible says to rejoice and be exceeding glad Glad, you know, mm. it's just the imagery of going through hard times and, and you're just glad. happy <laughs> because it's like you're, you're on the same level with Christ because, hey, he went through persecution also. Yeah. So those texts and so on, that, that sort of beatitude, really I'm not troubled by the troubled times that will come. Just can't wait for it. Huh. <laughs> wow. Um, I like that as well. But as we, as we look towards that troubling times, you know, that's a hard one to say smile amidst it all you know even when you're going through as you as you said um, elder newsome you have a, lo a lost one yeah. a loved one that has been you know for whatever reason um do you smile through that how can you find peace even in those circumstances and it boils back down to what that connection yeah. you have with We're Jesus. With God. Yes. You know, because one day even death itself shall die and that's one mm. of the assurance that, that we, we have, have from God. And so it's not that when you hear the news of a loved one, you're like, yay. But reminded that even at hmm. though uh, sin brought death in this world yeah. one day God will get rid of death and sin Amen. and we can rest in that assurance and you know this is all coming to the end and even as more troublesome time mm -hmm. comes the Bible says when we see these things happening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, look up, up. for our redemption draw it nigh hmm. so it's an indication that you know the world is coming to an end so we must press on amen and I like that too because sometimes we tend to think that this this world is our home and this world is not our home. This mm -hmm. world, as the songwriter says, we're just passing through. That's and if we right. understand that, when troubles come, we realize that we are just one step closer to that day when Jesus will come Correct. and redeem us from this sin sick world. So let's go down now to verses 13 through 16 as we go to the body of the Sermon of Jesus. And we see here um, some simple elements of life being used. We have salt and light. And as as we look at salt and light and how Jesus uses those analogies to describe how we should live, let's, let's look at these two elements now. Well, salt, mm -hmm. I like this use in cooking. Yes. And I like to eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyone can tell when a plate of food doesn't have some salt in it. Mm -hmm. it, it tastes different. Um, unless you have a special diet when mm -hmm. you need to have salt in your food, you know, that's you... you you sacrifice for that, you go for that. But otherwise, we need salt in, in almost our daily lives. Everything, yeah. Animals, they find a salt rock and they lick it to get some sodium into their bodies. Okay. So salt is very important in the creation of God's will. And so Jesus is using this simple element to, to emphasize to the people, without salt, how life would be different. Right. And the Christian is like salt in the earth. Hmm. So the, you're important to this world. So without you, the Christian, doing what you have to do, being the salt, the world will, not, the world will be lacking something very important. So, if we are to be the salt, or if we are the salt of the earth, and as you rightfully says, salt is in almost everything that we cook, mm -hmm. that we eat, that means as Christians, we are supposed to be sharing and giving of ourselves yeah. and ensuring that yeah. we have that impact on other people's That's lives, right. yes? Okay. First, we think about light. Well, the light, they, they say that light is not necessarily the absence of darkness but the ability to shine in spite of darkness. Mm. 
And Lovely. as Christian, even as we have been positioned in this dark world, God has called us to let our, our light shine. The truth about it we must understand is that that light is not a light that comes from us, but mm. a light that comes from God himself. And right. the fact that he dwells within us. And as he dwells within us, we will give off that glow. Hence, Jesus says, look, that when, you, when men see your good works, hmm, they will the glorify, glorify your him. Father, Amen. which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we must never be mistaken, and that happens to a lot of people, is that maybe you are a really great gospel singer, and you could be a great preacher, mm -hmm. and you get so caught up with yourself and with your own glory, and you think it's your light, and you're so awesome, and you, you think only about yourself. God says, no, it is not about you. Hmm. It's really about my glory, yeah. and that whatever we do, wherever we shine in, it should bring people to Jesus Amen. and not to ourselves. We, can't, we, we have to stop this attitude of promoting me mm -hmm. and we need to promote God. So I believe the light, we must understand it indeed. Jesus is the light yes. of the world also. Yes. And he has given us that privilege to be the light of the world with him mm -hmm. so that everything else will point to him and he will receive the glory even as we function here in this part of his vineyard. Amen. I will add nothing to that. That was well <laughs> said. Thank you so much. So let's go now to um, verse 17. And we see here... Jesus telling his listeners, I do I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy to destroy rather, but to fulfill. fulfill. Right. What, what's important about that? Well, I if we have signed a contract mm -hmm. uh, or given a promise to someone, I, put, I gave you a promise that I will come to do the program today. Right. Uh, by being here and taking part, I am fulfilling my promise. Right. Um, I'm not changing anything mm -hmm. in my promise, but I'm actually doing it. So to fulfill something doesn't mean it is destroy or you've done away something that is, has come before. Uh, and in a similar sense, that's what I see Jesus is saying here. That's right. Okay, so thank you so much. So you said that whatever is there before, it maintains. Yes. It, stands it stands as is, yes? That's and right. he has just come to fulfill it, yes? So as we go on to, I want to jump to verse um, 20. Right. As we see Jesus saying here that except our righteousness and exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, we shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And we want to enter the kingdom of heaven, right? That's right. So, Pastor, I want you to, to jump in here and tell me what Jesus means. Well, we need to, uh, first of all, understand the religious function of the day. Mm -hmm. The scribes and the Pharisees believe that their righteousness was based on their fulfillment of all the laws, as in they must obey. They have it off. We've covered the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. We've covered Moses' law. And so their righteousness was in their works. Okay. So they believed that their works would have gotten them to heaven, would secure A their place. place. Mm -hmm. And so Christ, is, Christ came by and he said, no, this is not really what it is about. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that your righteousness must exceed works. Hmm. And we know that we are not saved by works, but we're also saved by grace. Amen. That grace is an understanding that God has done great things for me. Yes. And it's only because of his mercies I'm not consumed. And even though I have checked all the box, hmm. it does not qualify me for heaven. Hmm. What really qualifies me for heaven is knowing and understanding I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. And because of that, His mercies towards me, I can function thereby. The Pharisees and the scribes did not believe in Jesus. They did not understand the work He came to do. And thus they lost the part of, of accepting His grace because God's grace is always offered yes. it's there mm -hmm. nonetheless mm -hmm. but it is important for us to accept the grace of god and knowing very well that when we do then our works combined with grace will allow us to enter into the kingdom of god amen you know and as we look even at the rich young ruler we saw where he came to jesus and he asked what might I, what might i do to be saved and what That's jesus right. told him he said he said, I fulfill all these commandments mm -hmm. from since I was small. According to you, he ticked off all the boxes. That's right. You know, Jesus said what? Go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. And he found that that was too high of a task for him to do. So, sacrifice. yeah, that sacrifice was too much. So what did he do? He turned away and left. 
-hmm. And therefore, even as you, as Pastor also mentioned about the scribes and Pharisees about works, Not sure. the Bible says what? All our righteousness are as filthy rags. As filthy so, rags. So therefore, we ought to come up. We, if we stay at the level of the scribes and Pharisees, that is filthy rags. That's right. Only Christ's righteousness is sufficient for us to be saved. Amen? And, you know, mm -hmm. what the scribes and Pharisees did is that they made God's law a burden. Mm -hmm. God's law was never supposed to be a burden. And it made people feel as though that they will never amount to this. So people often feel, and even now in today's society, sometimes we can send across the message that you need to have all of these things. And people say, well, I keep messing up all the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. Do does it mean that I'm not qualified for heaven? God wants us to know. His righteousness covers us. It's not that we go and we sin presumptuously, but we must understand that when, if any man sin, the Bible says we have an, an advocate, advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And it's important for each of us to n never forget that even when we slip, we can get up and keep on walking because it is God who is able to keep us from falling. So that is what we must understand in order for us to function well. Thank you very much, Pastor. Let's go down to verse 21. And from there we see Jesus giving some specific illustrations mm -hmm. as he sought to clarify to those who are around the correct interpretation of the law. And he being the author of it was in fact the only one who could really explain and illustrate the law. The first one that Jesus selected was the sixth commandment in the Decalogue. Thou mm -hmm. shalt not kill. And you should, could find that in Exodus 20 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew 5, 21 through 26 now, and let's see how Jesus sought to explain this commandment according to the spirit of the law. Matthew 5, 21 through 26. So Jesus tells his audience here that they know what killing is. Mm -hmm. You hurt someone, they have lost their life. But murdering is not just causing someone to lose their life. Thinking in your mind, Hating someone in your mind is considered murder. And he was also went on to say that if you if you're coming to the temple, if you're going to worship, you're coming to worship God, you're going to bring a gift, and you have someone in your mind, you should not come to worship because mm -hmm. you can't be breaking the commandment and honoring God at the same time. So you ought to leave where you are at the mm -hmm. temple, leave where you are with, in the, today's world, you'll see the church and go and make amends, go and find a peaceful solution mm -hmm. uh, to this. And the Beatitudes, we didn't touch on this one earlier, but they said, blessed are the peacemakers. Yes. You know, so go and become a peacemaker. Mm. And uh, and do not hold anyone in your heart. Or today's when we say, take, have, carry them on your mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, do not, do, don't do that. That is considered murdering. Sure. Wow. So, many of us are murderers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, I mean, who have not? in a serious sense, who have not held someone in their mind. And that shows you that really and truly, as the Bible says, God doesn't just look at what we do outside. He looks at the heart. The heart. And therefore, our minds, our heart should be clean. And as you rightfully says, don't carry people there. Don't let them rent space in your mind. Forgive. The Bible says if you want to be forgiven, we ought to forgive. forgive. So as we... We are wronged daily sometimes by people we love, people we don't love, people at work, people at church. But we have a responsibility, even as um, Jesus says, to forgive 70 times 7. Just keep on forgiving because we are always in need of forgiveness. Sometimes we think that others are always doing wrong against us and we are the, you know, we are always correct, we are always right. But it's not always that way, and we oftentimes need forgiveness as well. So as we forgive others, the Bible says that we will also be forgiven. Yeah, right? forgive, forgiveness is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying it says that unforgiveness is like drinking a glass of poison hmm. and hoping the other person will die. Hmm. So sometimes, in essence, we're really killing ourselves wow. when we hold other people in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And you go around upset and you are burdened. And the funny thing about it is mm -hmm. that some people don't even know that you're on their mind. And they're just going along their merry way and you're depressed mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you're down and you're out and you're having suicidal thoughts. And they're living very normal. happy <laughs> lives, normal. They don't even know what is happening. So sometimes you really have to 
forgive people. They say forgiveness is like letting a prisoner free only to find out that that prisoner it's was you. you. Hmm. So that's what's important today, that many people are suffering because of unforgiveness in their hearts hmm. and they carry that burden around for years mm -hmm. years and all it's doing is killing, killing us them. inside. Mm -hmm. So we are self-murderers, hmm. suicidal. Hmm. So we are. And in light of what you said, I heard, um, I heard us saying that forgiveness is not really for the person, you know. Mm -hmm. It's more for you. For you. Because you rightfully says it frees you yeah to get well and, and to move on and to move on amen so we see here that even hating people holding people on them on our minds can be equivalent to murder and we can be left out of the kingdom for this and we don't want that we want to be saved when jesus comes oh yes so forgive even as christ forgives you let's look at verses 27 through 32 now as we look at um, adultery the seven commandments in the Decalogue, you can also find that in Exodus 20, verse 14. And let's see how Jesus um, explained adultery in that you can commit adultery by not even reaching in bed with that person. Yeah. Let's look at that. I, I, I love how Christ was, and I want to read mm -hmm. the verse. It says, He have heard that it was said by them of all time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 28 says, But I say unto you, that whosoever woman to lust, lust after hmm. her hath committed adultery already with her already in his heart there are many people who call themselves virgins but they've had sex already mm -hmm. it's like this many people have access to pornography and they watch pornography and through pornography they may masturbate or get an erection or lust after mm -hmm. these um, individuals that they are seeing and within their bodies, it creates that sort of adrenaline and hmm. your mind already thinks that you've committed the act. Hmm. I was reading an article the other day about this young, this um, woman actually, she's uh, in her 30s, mm -hmm. and she was saying she did not know she was that addicted to pornography mm -hmm. until one day she went into an adult store to buy some videos and there was an orgy going on hmm. and then she just participated wow. just like that with wow. total strangers wow. and that is because she had already feasted her mind hmm. on it so her brain already thought so when she's thinking this is her first time this was hmm. like her fifth tenth time mm -hmm. she'd already committed the it's adultery a, in her right, heart so the right. action was quite simple hmm. most of the times we wait until the action but the action we've already too far gone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so god is talking about a pureness of our hearts and mind that's why he said whatsoever things are pure Pure. Pure. What sort of things are lovely. lovely? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are true? What sort of things of good report? Hmm. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Hmm. So when you look at somebody and you desire them sexually, hmm. you've committed the adultery already wow. in the heart wow. and not necessarily the action. So it's hmm. important for individuals to understand that large effect that hmm. these things have in their lives. And later on, you have married people who have some serious problems right. because of all these relationships people have. And they say, well, oh, I wasn't with this person. person. But with their minds, they've all go already gone through a lot with them. Wow. Um, wow. There's this thing where they call hmm. it emotional infidelity. Mm -hmm. And they actually say women do it a lot. It's where they picture themselves a lot with somebody else and mm -hmm. wanting to be with another person. Okay. So when, when they actually have this spouse, mm -hmm. they're not seeing the spouse in the wow. bed. They see an, an, another man. Hmm. And that, that, that can be something very horrendous. That's why Jesus said, Pliny, look, hmm. if you look upon a woman so or lust. if you look upon a man yeah. with mm -hmm. lust, mm -hmm. you've committed adultery already in the, uh, yeah. in the heart. So let's not wait until the action. Hmm. That's so deeper because as it, I heard you say that by the time the action is manifested, you already Mm -hmm. how many times before yes and as i say really and truly what we do is a direct result of what we have been thinking Correct. before so we ought to as you say think on pure things on clean things on good things that our minds will always be directed towards god mm -hmm. so let's go on now to verses 33 through 37 and as we look at the third illustration of Christ's interpretation of the law. We speak here mostly about swearing. Let's look at that for a moment. I, I see Christ telling us here that as created beings, we don't own anything. Not okay. even the hair on our heads. Wow. And um, we need to be mindful of that. 
that he is the creator and that we need to treat him and the things that he created with respect. Okay. Um, many a times we bounce our toe and the first thing we call is the oh God. God's, God's <laughs> yes, we call, we call God's name or, or, or some other aspect and not that we are thinking of God or and, hmm. uh, and okay. it, it shows that we are not treating that person with respect. We okay. will not be calling out the Prime Minister's name mm -hmm. or another religious figure. We'll say the Pope's name just really nearly like that. Oh, okay. Um, because we, we show those people respect or we will not be calling out our parents' names like that. They mm -hmm. will get a, a telling off, should we call <laughs> <my name>? But <laughs> I, I, I think sometimes in our minds, God is so far removed that we hmm. take his name for, for granted. granted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and that may well be so because it goes back to, to the... Um, the attitude that Pastor would have spoken about earlier, about seeking after righteousness. Mm -hmm. And because we are not seeking after righteousness, he is far removed from us, mm -hmm. you understand? And so we treat him as it were, for want of a better expression, with scant courtesy. Mercy. And so we call his name in vain. And it talks about um, swearing as well. C could I even extend that towards making promises and not fulfilling them? Well, in a sort of a light, I want to say that sometimes, um, let me just put it back for, for swearing, that a lot of people swear to based on the movies they watch. And so sometimes you have good Christians watching shows that are filled with cursing. Mm. And they say they have no intention to curse. But the moment their child gets them upset, they find a curse word to come out. And, and they're wondering and why. They're shocked you know but you light has associated itself with darkness mm -hmm. and therefore in any instant on the pressure darkness will come out because that's what you've been feasting on um when we make promises and we we swear the bible says that you should not swear not even by the hair on your head because you can't make it grow mm -hmm. nor by height because you can't make yourself grow you should not do those things. therefore we should not make promises and deep promises that we ourselves are not sure if we can keep. keep. Hmm. You know, I'm not saying if somebody said, would you come to see me later, say, yeah, definitely, beyond a shadow of doubt. You say, by, by God's grace or God willing, I'm going to come. But sometimes we make promises that we have no intentions of keeping. Hmm. It's just that we want to please the person's hearing at the time. So hmm. we make those promises so that is in that itself is very dishonesty? dangerous it is it is it is dishonest it is dishonest or those people who say yes you know those people say yes to a lot of stuff yeah yeah, yeah no problem good 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 and then they've made 10 appointments for the <laughs> same time and can't fulfill, can't fulfill it. them so so you let your year be year and your, and your name, name be name. Name. that's correct mm -hmm. Let's go on now to the fourth illustration. We'll go through verses 38 through 42. And I'll look at that for a moment. Um, is it concerned with the attitude of a Christian in terms of suffering injury at the hands of another? Which ties into the prescription that um, Brother Newsom would have spoken about, about being a peacemaker. And they said, don't take an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. In other words, don't re retaliate because someone has done you something. And we often do that, you know. And we say sometimes it's reflexes. Somebody lash here, and your heart automatically goes to lash them, and we blame it on reflexes. But sometimes, too, it's, it, it's a direct result of what we have been looking at. Perhaps we've been looking at violent movies. We've been playing violent movie, um, video games, okay. you know? And therefore, again, it goes back to that um, beatitude to set our minds on things above, you know? Seek after righteousness. And so we look at... When the Bible mm -hmm. even talks about blessed are the pure in heart, mm -hmm. but they shall see God. Let us be honest here. There are people who hurt us mm -hmm. tremendously yeah. and who do things that you, you don't even expect. You, you've not even thought about it. It's so hard because you would never do that to them. And how do you now go back and function the same? Mm -hmm. Some people have had serious cases of infidelity. How do you go back? To that house hmm. and, and function the same some people have lied on you and some folks have ended up in prison because of that how do you now go back and do the same yet God has asked us to extend ourselves and the truth about it it is not you who you're extended but it's God who's extended hmm. himself in you and that's why it's important to have him because mm, as as a human I really can't do what hmm. I'm supposed to do but with God present in my life he gives me the strength and the Bible says that you know when you're when people offend you when they've done
them just do them good mm -hmm. and you heap coals of fire on amen, their head amen. sometimes people can't handle niceness hmm. the worst thing for somebody is that when you've done them something bad and you started treating them really nice they get very very much confused yes <laughs> yeah, i've seen it happen they're quite confused they, they don't get it you know so it's important for us to remember that god really wants us to go beyond our natural hmm, self yes. and that's why we have to hung and thirst for his righteousness so that when we are filled we're able to give that overflow mm -hmm. jesus went to calvary mm -hmm. with the understanding that these very same people mm -hmm. are going to spit on me these yeah. very same people are going to nail me these very same mm -hmm. people i've come to save yet he said father forgive them yes. for they know not what to do there are many people who have hurt us and they don't even know they don't even understand the extent of their hurt. Mm -hmm. And that's why we forgive mm -hmm. and we move on because we of ourselves need healing. And God said he is the vindicator yes. of the righteous. Amen. And we must never forget that. Amen. Pastor, I don't know if you were looking over here because that's exactly what I, <laughs> I was going to say. Especially, you know, with Jesus and he, in the midst of, of, his, um, of his situation there, of him being spat upon and beaten, he says, Father, forgive them. Yeah. That, is, that is beyond me. You know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can we do that? Can we say those things even when we are being ostracized and hurt and beaten and, and accused wrongfully? Can we do that? But Jesus showed us that it is possible for us yes. to do it. Amen. We can, in fact, overcome evil with good. Yes, Amen? Right. Amen? So let's go to uh, verse 48. All right? As we look at the Samani Mount, we can really see this as what? An exposition of love. This is That's really right. what it is. It's just about love. Because God is love, we as his children should reflect that love to others. In verse 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Pastor, what does it mean to be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect? And is it an ideal that we can attain? Perfection is a line and not a point. Okay. While God himself is perfect and does not need the line because he is fully perfect, there are points of perfection we reach on this line. Okay. So let me explain. Mm -hmm. There are some of us we would have covered elementary school, primary school, and secondary we have perfected that okay but we have not perfected education okay the christian journey requires as we walk this line of perfection that is actually the very line of god the very foundation of god that we must be overcomers to be perfect is to overcome a besetting sin okay. what has happened to many of us over the years is that you are in the very same classroom again hmm. and so most persons are filled in the same class about four times hmm. and you're doing this over and over again so you have not perfected that stage each stage we will have trouble we will have a difficulty we will have a sin that will set us back but god wants us to overcome at so each stage say, at each stage so when he says be therefore perfect even as my father and i in heaven are perfect is basically saying as you walk this line of perfection it is a overcomer's line yeah. because even jesus had to overcome when jesus was in the garden of gethsemane he's hmm. like you know if it be possible hmm. Yeah, let this. this cup pass on me that mm -hmm. is where self came and as well self stop it he looked at at the journey to to calvary and he said that it's not going to happen. Mm. I really can't do this. But understanding he so, must now mm. rely on the strength of his father. Yes. He said, nevertheless, my, my will, will, but thy will, will be done. Amen. Amen. God's will in our lives mm -hmm. is the perfect will. Amen. And if we accept that daily, then we are perfect, even as our father in heaven is perfect. Amen. That's Thank you so is. much. I want to read a little portion from the lesson guide. Mm -hmm. Under Wednesday, it says the important thing to remember here is that God does not ask of us anything that he cannot accomplish in us. It, if left to ourselves, if dominated by our sinful and selfish hearts, who would love their enemies? That's not how the world works. But are we not now citizens of another kingdom? We have the promise that if we surrender ourselves to God, then he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll pause here for item of special music by Sophia Paul. Thank you so much, Sister Paul. I want to switch now to the Old Testament. Right. As we go to Micah 6, 6 to 8. And uh, because I, I see there what I like to call an Old Testament version or summary of the Sermon on the Mount. Right. So let's see, Pastor, if you can show us a parallel day to the Sermon on the Mount and Micah 6, 6 to, through 8. Well, when, when I read, the, I think it's important for us to read yes, it please. because um, many persons may not be familiar. So it says that, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, hmm. but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with, with thy God. God. It's amazing. Before this lesson, I did not know that... Um, Matthew 5 and this can actually be tied in but even as I look at the verse uh, as, as, at these couple of verses you know God wants us to really understand that is once again it's not about your works it's not so much about what you do and what you try to do and all these things and God I'll sacrifice for this Lord remember watch me I'm giving up this I'm giving up that no but to have that pure heart to walk justly the bible says to do justly to love mercy, mercy and to walk, walk humbly, humbly with your god hmm. when, when when we are functioning our daily life there are three things we must remember the first thing every step you make it must be ordered by god amen, amen. whatever decision hmm. you're making whatever thing you wish to accomplish in your life yes. you must know that god desires that of you even if it's a car hmm. what type of car you may want even hmm. if it's a house a job you must know that your god has consented it wow. it must be god's divine will and not just his permissive will hmm. because sometimes as christians we do a lot of things hmm. and then god has to some we come to god so that hmm. he'll put the ice in on the cake mm -hmm. and we or call it our decision yeah we call it god's choice but no god God is saying let my divine will hmm. be worked out in your life yes. and when we do these things you know we're able to accomplish what God desires for us when we the, the second thing that we ought to do is to look out for other people yes the Christian part is not just about you walking alone mm -hmm. there are many folks we can do things very selfishly we're very selfish and self-centered hmm. and about my way hmm. sometimes in church people will have great ideas mm -hmm. but they choose not to share that idea simply they may not be in the position they were not elected to that specific office hmm. so they don't want to say anything hence the idea turned out to be something really really great mm -hmm. and another person Get gets the glory, the glory. <laughs> And they're offended by that. No, but we're all supposed to be in one work hmm. so that when we have an idea for the cause of God to go forward and for the glory of God to shine out, it is important that we give those ideas. So we not just look for ourselves, we're looking out for others yeah. and for the cause of the kingdom. And thirdly, it's for, important for us to remember that every person is a candidate for heaven. Yes. Your neighbor next door, your friend, your family members, the drunkard, the vagrant, mm -hmm. everyone that you pass on the street is a candidate for heaven. What are you doing in assisting them on this journey? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Are we just giving up on them? We're just going to pass them by? Or are we so focus in this heaven bound train that we don't have time to look over to the right or the left mm. and to snatch people from from the army of the devil mm. i want to say that's important that we really and truly walk in the way god wants us to walk i, I, mm -hmm. I see the text also saying uh, do not 
commit a sin or do something wrong simply because forgiveness is available. Okay. You know, the question is asked, what should I bring before God? Mm -hmm. Should I bring a, a thousand lambs? Should I bring all these sacrifices? Should I even sacrifice my children? Hmm. But really what God wants me to do good. So mm -hmm. I've heard persons do a wrong or say something to someone in the heat of the moment. And then they simply say, I know God will forgive me. Mm -hmm. So it's not because forgiveness is available means we must hmm. do wrong. We actually go back to what says to do good. Mm -hmm. And not abuse what is he, the gift of salvation which he offers us and the gift of forgiveness which he also gives to us. Amen, amen. 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 Because he didn't say when we sin, the Bible didn't say when we sin, he said if we sin. Mm -hmm. Right? Because God wants us to live above sin. And as you rightfully says, um, perfection is that progressive work. So God wants us to continually climb ever onward and upward. That's that right. as we do so, we can become closer to God. As we get closer to God, we would share that those godly characteristics as we meet others. We would be just with people. We'd be fair. We'd be honest. We would be humble. And that is um, something that is probably far-fetched that humility part when you say to walk humbly before your God and we see Jesus being that example of humility and we too have to exemplify or show forth that same humility and as pastor would have mentioned you know something that you're not in the position and because you're not humble that you wouldn't share an idea because if you were humble you would share the idea because it doesn't matter who gets the glory because at any someone would have benefited from your idea right. and through that they might have said yes to Jesus and that is the important thing now, let's see if we can look at probably just a few schools of thought because there are many schools of thought as it relates to the Sermon on the Mount we might just be able to look at a few maybe one or two because we're almost out of time viewers um, the first one we like to look at is one that says that the Sermon on the Mount is an impossibly high moral standard that drives us to our knees and causes us to claim the righteousness as Jesus as our only hope of salvation as because we have fallen far short of the divine standard revealed in the Sermon of the Mount. I mean, I see some merit in this, um, in this school of thought. Um, Brother Newsom, do you see any merit in this one? But I agree that it is a high moral standard. Mm -hmm. um, God is, God is perfect and we yes. have managed at the end of the Matthew chapter 5 to be perfect. Yes, even as, as he is perfect, perfect yes. yes. So, and we are born in sin and shape in mm -hmm. so he's calling us indeed to a, a high. high moral standard. Mm -hmm. he, when God created Adam, he created him perfect mm -hmm. and the Adam and Eve were supposed to be made obedient to him. But because of their sin, we are now, you know, sin, sin. but over time we have progressively gone deeper in our sin. True. And so it has seemed that we have gone so far from the standard. But the thing is, it is not impossible Amen. to to I be do. to what God is asking us because Christ came as a babe. He lived on this earth, grew as a man and overcame sin. And as a result now giving us a free gift of salvation mm -hmm. and gives us the power to overcome every single temptation that we may face in our individual lives. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is that we don't realize how powerful we are. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, we have access to yes, this we ultimate have access power. To the power. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. It's like someone living next door to a gym. <laughs> they don't have to pay, right? Yeah. But yet they never go into the gym to work out. They yeah. have access to, mm -hmm. to to maintain their health, to build muscle and strength. But, but you're they, taking it far. They li sometimes they have the gym in their house. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not I'm tapping into gym. that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that's a very important point, you know, because God has said, come boldly, come boldly before the throne of grace that you might receive mercy and help in time of need. And what do we do? The songwriter asks, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We have that power that's available to us. And I like that, um, that um, Brother Newsom would have mentioned that with God, all things are possible. And indeed, as I said before, he will not give us a standard that we cannot attain through him, okay? Because with him, all things are possible. And we also look, um, let's go now to another viewpoint. Uh, Philippians, let me just mention Philippians 4.13. I've told you before, that's my favorite text. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So despite this, what we might be looking at as a high standard, God says with him, we can yes. attain we can. that standard. Another viewpoint is that the Sermon on the Mount is just about civil ethics. A call for pacifism. 
Pacifism, I understand, is a theory that peaceful rather than violent or hostile relations should govern human interactions and settle disputes. Pastor Newsom, is this an agreeable viewpoint and is it something that we can attain in this adversarial world in which we live? Well, um, even the Apostle Paul encouraged us um, that we must preach the gospel of peace. Yes. Um, when Jesus was departing, he says, my peace, peace I leave you. with you. I believe that peace is something that we ought to have. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, where they shall be called the children of God. Whenever there's a hostile situation, you must determine, are you there to calm things down? Mm. Or are you there to throw more fuel in the fire? Right. Even when you're having an argument with, with your spouse, are you there to throw fuel in the fire? Hmm. Are you gonna really gonna flame this up? Or are you gonna calm this down? Are you gonna be the one that says, let's pray about this? Are you gonna hmm. be the one to hold back on your tongue, knowing very well that what you're about to say My may hurts. be very hurtful mm -hmm. and it will cause more harm than heal, than heal the person? What do you do? So I, I, be, I believe in this theory of peace. Mm -hmm. I believe that we ought to be peaceful. Um, in this hostile world, we should be children of peace. We should be refugees of peace. Our homes must hmm. be homes of peace. peace. I've been to homes, and as soon as you walk in, you just feel like the presence of God is in this place. Oh, it's almost walking Lord. into a church. Hmm. So peaceful. People must feel blessed coming into your homes. And I've been to other homes that I am sure that's probably where the spot hell will be. Because mercy, there's so much mercy, hostility mercy. and there's so much anger and there's so much animosity hmm. that you really wonder how do they exist wow. in this place, you hmm. know. So God really wants us to have peace. We ought to be children of peace. Mm -hmm. We ought to be that sort of individuals, you know. The Bible talks about uh, uh, in Luke 2, 14, uh, at Jesus' birth, it says, glory to God in highest mm -hmm. and on earth, peace, peace. goodwill to God. When Jesus came, he came to give peace, Amen. all right? And I'm happy to be a child of God. And I believe that he will give me the peace and continue to have peace in my life. So that even as I relate to others, I will be one that exhibits more peace than war. Amen, amen. So I want to read a little portion here for you in Matthew 5, 9. Christ here refers particularly to bringing men into harmony with God. In Romans 8, 7, we are told the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm -hmm. But Christ, the master peacemaker, came to show men that God is not their enemy. Not sure. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Right. He was the messenger of peace from God to man. And justified by faith, we have peace with God. Yeah. Indeed, Jesus says when he was leaving, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Christians are to be peacemakers among themselves, as Pastor would have mentioned, and to follow peace with all men. They are to pray for peace, they are to work for peace, and to make a constructive interest, to take a constructive interest rather in activities that contribute to a peaceful state of society. Psalm 1965 says what? Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. Pastor, before we go, we have a program that is happening. Yes. Can you tell your viewers a little more about that? Well, so far we've been having a wonderful week uh, down at the Marys Hill Junction. We've had that fantastic messages. We will continue this week uh, every night, 7 p.m., except Thursday evening, where we're having this evangelistic campaign, caption, Rescued, Ransom, and Redeemed, the Power of the Cross. And so we want to invite folks to come by, come and hear a word from God, come and allow our lives to be transformed or your families to be blessed. Uh, this Wednesday night, we're having a big, massive prayer session. You know, we know folks having financial difficulties. Mm. You need prayers for your relationships. People need prayers for their children. Mm -hmm. We want you to come by and to bring your burdens to the cross because they say that burdens indeed are lifted at Calvary. So we want to assure you that indeed we're going to be, we're. We'll continue to have a blessed time this week, and we want you to bring by your friends, family, relatives, and neighbors, and even those you may think that don't like you. Bring them too, <laughs> so that they will love you even more for sharing the gospel with them. Amen. Pastor, you said it's rescued, ransomed, ransomed and, and redeemed. redeemed. I love it. And what's the last part? The power part? of the cross. The power of the cross. Yes, and we can tie that right in with the, with the um, Sermon on the Mount. Yes, <laughs> 
that is essentially what it's about, to help us to be rescued, ransomed, and redeemed. redeemed. And because you just went to the cross, all these things are available to us. That's we right. have God's power available to us. We can tap into that power, as um, Brother New Sam was saying. We can tap into that power, access it. It's there. It's available for each of us, equally available for each of us. We may just have a moment now to probably look at um, our closing thoughts. And you know, we have a fi about five minutes left. So let's go to Matthew 13, because I did mention before that I want to tie in Matthew 13 with... Um, with the Sermon on the Mount, right? Where we find several parables showing the application of Jesus' teachings in our lives. And we look quite briefly at the, maybe one or two or three of the parables from verses 44 through 50. Who will start us off? We have the parable of the hidden treasure, the parable of the pearl, and the parable of the draw net cast into the sea. I'm looking here, viewers, at Matthew 13, 44 through 50. Well, in the parable of the field, but Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like another merchant man and he's seeking goodly pearls. When he finds one, he knows where it is. He sells all as he has to attain it. Yes. And so I see Jesus telling us that the things of his kingdom, the things of him are most important to us. And we should sacrifice everything else to ensure that we are pursuing the things of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, he says, Seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't specify what all these things are, but God will know supply all, all of our needs. needs. Amen. His, the cattle upon a thousand hills are to his. Him. Amen. You know, so we, we need not to fear but what God is saying. Seek, come after me. I, I created you. Yes. I know you. Take, take care of what is most important for your spiritual need hmm. and I will worry about everything else that hmm. you are in need of. We serve mm. a wonderful God, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he will supply God. all our needs. Just seek him first yeah. and all other things will be added unto us. That's a wonderful promise. Pastor? Um, I like the, the verse. Verse 4 talks about the man going into the field also. Mm -hmm. And it says that again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. The which when a man had found, he hide it, and for joy thereof go it, and sell it all that he had, hmm. and buy it that field. Hmm. <laughs> everything, everything that you have, you give okay. for the cause of Christ. Hmm. I often ask myself, have I sacrificed enough hmm. for the cause of Christ? Or do I spend so much time getting for me or waiting for a blessing from God from on high mm -hmm. and waiting for more and more from God? What have I given to the cause of God or to the cause of God rather, knowing that this world is not my home and I'm just passing through. Therefore, everything that I have, everything that is in me, everything that I do ought to be reflecting daily God in my life and going forward into his ministry and his mission. And I pray that, you know, as I continue this Christian pathway, that I will rest assured in everything I do is of God. Amen. And I just like how the Bible ties everything together because, again, we talk about that sacrifice and what sacrifice we are willing to make for this prize that we want. We want to be saved. We want to go to heaven, but are we willing to make the sacrifices to get there? And I trust that we will be willing to make the sacrifices. We won't be able to go through all of the verses with you. We trust that you'll, in your quiet time, study Matthews 5 through 7 and Matthew 13 in your personal devotion. In totality, the Sermon on the Mount is an extraordinary description of the life of the citizens of the kingdom. Christ calls us to go beyond the letter of the law and live by the spirit of the law. The Christian's moral and spiritual life must transcend the thou shalt nots to embrace the thou shalt bees. We'll end here with a word of prayer. Join us as we pray for you. Pastor, could you pray for our viewers? Let us pray. Loving God and Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. We ask, Lord, that you please bless all our viewers and even bless us here on the panel. Help us that every day, whatever we do, wherever we go and whatever we say, mm -hmm. we will function according to your will yes. until you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, viewers, and thank you, panelists. God bless you until next time. And remember, you are blessed to be a blessing.